Welcome to the complete guide on aquaponic pH management with Potent Ponics. This is a segment of our aquaponic master classes, which we have both an aquaponic master class for all plants, as well as an aquaponic cannabis master class. If you're interested in it, uh, please check it out. What is pH? pH is a measurement of how acidic or alkaline a given liquid source is, generally referring to water, but sometimes can refer to other chemicals. Uh, between 0 and 14, with 0 being acidic and 14 being very alkaline, and rainwater or uh, natural, you know, just H2O with no additional mineralization, uh, being a pH of 7. Uh, pH directly affects the bioavailability of your water. Uh, nutrients uh, will, can be locked out completely if you have it too far out of range, you know, too high or too low. A great example of this would be if your water is very high in pH, uh, iron is very hard for the plants to uptake, just as a given example. Um, uh, you know, at any time you have pH outside of the normal range of the plants as well, uh, that can be a problem. Some plants have a very specific pH that they need to grow at. You know, uh, things like blueberries or raspberries much prefer very acidic soil, whereas other, other plants prefer more alkaline soil. It just depends on what it is that you're uh, growing. In general, in aquaponics, we want to keep it in the you know, mid-sixes range, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, Managing your pH is extremely important to make sure that both your fish and your plants uh, remain healthy for a long time. Uh, a rapid pH change is one of the easiest ways to kill your fish in aquaponics. So some common pH myths um, that I often hear. Um, pH doesn't need to be monitored uh, or adjusted. Um, that, that's just completely bonkers. Uh, anyone that's kept an aquarium or done hydro knows that uh, it's extremely important. Um, you know, even in soil, you do need to keep it within a range that's, you know, semi close to what your plants want. Uh, I know there are videos out there that say you don't even need to bother with it, which is just goofy. Um, sand systems use magic in order to maintain balance uh, with their pH. They, they, they just don't even work. Um, you know, they have so many false claims now that you could write a whole book just on the false claims of the, the sand myths. So, uh, just ignore any of their false claims. Their systems lower in pH over time, just the same as a normal aquaponic system does. I know this because we ran one. Um, calcium from any different uh, from your water source can easily be enough to maintain pH. Now, while you might be able to maintain pH or and alkalinity with a calcium heavy water source, you're going to end up with very low potassium levels over time. And what will happen is your uh, your potassium will be so low that you uh, don't have any way for um, you to supplement that in a way that does add sulfur or chloride to the system over time. So that can become a problem. So you really want to make sure that you're alternating calcium and potassium inputs when raising and maintaining your pH. Uh, high and low pH is not a problem, but absolutely is a problem uh, for both nutrient bioavailability and your fish health. Um, you know, African cichlids need to have a uh, high pH, South American cichlids want low pH. So, you know, it's extremely important and can greatly affect both fish and plant health. Uh, microbes adjust the pH in the root zone, so the plants don't need to worry about the water pH. Um, that's just false. Um, I've seen that and been told that by people before that just didn't know what they're doing. Um, and then pH is a lie developed by Big Hydro. Um, that's also one I've heard before, is that uh, it's, it's just something that they're trying to sell you nutrients for, and it's just a uh, it's a complete lie, um, <laughs> but it's always fun to talk about the goofy stuff that people come up with. Why does your pH change in your system? Well, in a normal healthy aquaponic system, uh, your pH will lower over time. In general, you're going to lower, you know, 0.2 to 0.3 per week, um, you know, depending on your stocking rate and your nitrogen levels. Uh, you know, most systems are going to drop between 0.1 and 0.3 um, pH in a given week. Uh, sometimes faster, sometimes lower. It just depends on stocking rates and system size and turnover and a million other variables. But uh, in general, you should expect to be adjusting your system at least once or twice a week to maintain pH uh, in the proper range. And something you should be checking at least once a day, uh, if not putting an electronic monitor on it, just to make your life much easier. pH um, will start rising if you have anaerobic zones. Um, and I mostly see this in people that are way overfeeding or people that have very inadequately designed filtration or in sand systems. Um, those are kind of the three times that I see this problem. And what happens is the waste builds up in there uh, in these areas of low flow uh, or where they don't have um, you know, uh, enough microbes or 
um, and just deep, dense media beds or sand beds uh, where that just gets in there and it starts to rot and putrefy. Well, those anaerobes start to uh, work the nitrification process in reverse and start to increase the um, the pH and uh, and greatly uh, screw up your nitrogen levels in terms of nitrate, nitrite, and ammonia. You'll end up with high levels of ammonia and nitrite, uh, as well as a rising pH. And that's a great way to tell immediately if you have a dead fish in the system or you have a low flow problem or you have clogs in the system or a poorly designed beds, um, you know, whatever it may be, um, that can be a great indicator that something is majorly wrong with either the design or, you know, one of the fish died or something like that. If your pH suddenly starts to rise, look around again, see if a rat fell in your system or a fish fell in, or uh, died in the system or, you know, if any of your beds are clogged. You need to worry about pH. Yes, you absolutely do. As we spoke about before, if it's too high or too low, it can greatly affect plant health. It's the fastest way to kill your fish. Um, you know, you accidentally dose your pH up or pH down too fast. That's why you should always dose your, your uh, aquaponic pH up or pH down with a dosing bucket. Basically, just take a bucket, drill a hole in the bottom. Uh, so it slowly has to pour out over the course of, you know, 20 or 30 minutes. Uh, mix your pH up or down in a five, you know, into a five gallon bucket, pour it into the, the drip bucket that's over your sump, and then just let it, you know, slowly dose the system. You can also use the airline um, valves for that as well to uh, to make yourself kind of an auto dose or even just a, a two liter that you have laying around is put a pinhole in it and let it sit on the side of your sump uh, if you're doing a smaller size system or an aquarium. And then you don't have to worry about sitting there and you know remembering to, to pour a little bit more pH up or pH down in every 15 to 30 minutes. It'll just slowly trickle in and you won't have to think about it and it'll do it slow enough to where it won't harm the fish or the plants. Um, the slower that you adjust your pH is is uh, uh, the better in terms of fish and plant health. Uh, adjusting your pH also gives the opportunity to add nutrients that wouldn't otherwise be added by fish food. So calcium, potassium, magnesium, and silica are all nutrients that are not provided enough by fish food alone for proper plant health. So by adding those when you adjust your pH in the form of calcium carbonate, potassium silicate, uh, potassium bicarbonate, magnesium carbonate, uh, potassium magnesium carbonate uh, or magnesium sulfate uh, or calcium uh, or silica uh, in the form of potassium silicate or calcium silicate. So uh, those are your ways that you can add nutrients and adjust your pH. Uh, again, the uh, magnesium sulfate won't on that list, but everything else that I did mention will, uh, will raise your pH. And we'll get to that in the up and down pH sections. So, uh, you know, pH is really, you know, critical for proper growth for both your fish and plant health. We generally try to keep all of our systems around 6.6 .6 to 6.8, uh, unless you're cycling a new system. If you're cycling a new system, you want your system to be around 7.2 to 7.4. That additional carbonate in the water will help with microbial replication uh, and help you with uh, faster microbial colonization in the system so that you don't have to cycle the system as long. A uh, small pH change of 0.1 or 0.2 from daytime to nighttime is normal. If you're seeing big swings in pH from daytime to nighttime or in a 12-hour in cycle, it's, it means your KH or alkalinity is too low and that you need to go ahead and use potassium bicarbonate um, at, in your next pH up dose in order to help uh, adjust for that. So as you can see in this chart here, uh, you can see that between 6 and 7, or 6 and 6.8, uh, if we're going to be uh, a technical, is the key range for the maximum bioavailability for all your nutrients. You can see here as those lines are fatter or skinnier, that shows you the bioavailability of those given nutrients, which is how much the plant can utilize those nutrients, which is why we want to keep it right about 6.6, 6, which is where you get the absolute maximum amount of bioavailability in your aquaponic system. That's really what you want to aim for, 6.6. .6. So for pH up, your do's and don'ts. You want to keep it between 6.6 .6 and 6.8. Uh, for dosing, you want to uh, uh, alternate between potassium silicate and potassium bicarbonate, uh, calcium carbonate. And then if you want to go the hippy dippy way, you can use wood ash, which has both calcium and potassium uh, carbonates in it. Uh, you know, if you're doing it on a really, really backwards or ultra low budget method, um, it will work. But in general, we use potassium silicate and calcium carbonate with the occasional doses of potassium bicarbonate to adjust the, the alkalinity. 
I do not recommend potassium or calcium hydroxides. I know they used to be taught as a safe thing for aquaponics. Um, you can't send them on an airplane. They're ORMD, which means I'm not going to use them in my vegetables. Uh, and also they're way, way too easy to overdose, especially if you're not the one doing it and you're relying on employees or a helper. Um, they're going to overdose at some point with potassium hydroxide or calcium hydroxide, and it just avoids you instantly killing the whole system or your worker instantly killing the whole system because they accidentally, you know, used too much so the cap fell off or whatever stupid thing happens um, when people working on uh, systems make mistakes. And then if you want to raise your pH up, again, you can see the ones in green here are the ones that are recommended. Um, the pink ones at the bottom are the ones that aren't, and the other ones are also safe options. So you can use calcium silicate, uh, calcium chloride, calcium magnesium carbonate, magnesium carbonate, potassium carbonate, uh, when dose is directed, uh, absolutely can be used to raise pH. None of these are going to, you know, if you're doing a pH adjustment, none of these are going to add enough of anything, even the calcium chloride, uh, to have any kind of negative impact on your system. Most aquaponic systems due to the high level of aeration are already too low on chloride anyway. Um, so adding a little bit as your pH up in the event of uh, you wanting to use a little bit of ice melt for your pH up because you ran out is perfectly safe. Uh, you're not going to hurt anything. pH down, you want to use phosphoric acid and muriatic acid uh, uh, for most of the time and then lactobacillus for small adjustments. So if I have uh, anything more than 7.8, I'm going to use muriatic acid. Uh, if I have an adjustment that's um, between 7.6 and 7, yeah, 7.6, 7.8 on the high end, um, down to about 7, phosphoric acid's okay. Um, and then after that, I would switch to labs. It just depends on the amount because phosphoric acid, if you overdose too much of it, it will start to buffer your pH. Um, the phosphorus will build up to the point where you'll actually have a hard time uh, lowering your pH after that if you strictly rely on that alone. The other thing you can do too is if you're cycling a brand new system, you can just go get a bunch of blocks of dry ice and crash out the pH with the carbonic acid from the CO2 and then, you know, redose the pH back up with calcium and, and potassium. Um, you know, but do, do that with a system with live fish and plants. Just do that if you're cycling a brand new field system after you've tested it for leaks. Right. For pH down, uh, it's best to use a muriatic acid if you have any pH that's above 7.8. Uh, if you're below about 7.6, 7.8, then I would switch to phosphoric acid. Uh, and then if it's, you know, within 7.2, 7.4, then you can use something like lactobacillus. Uh, and the reason why I say to use these in different tiers is that muriatic acid is the strongest. And you absolutely can use it, you know, for everything, but it's, you know, not really the best thing to use in your system if you can avoid it. Um, phosphoric acid, if you overuse it too much, it will actually build up enough phosphorus in the system to start buffering your pH a little bit, which can be a problem, um, especially long term when you're trying to adjust it. You can have, you know, way too much phosphoric acid in the system um, to the point where it becomes a problem if, um, you know, you're starting off at like an 8.6 or 8.4 or some other very high pH. Uh, and then lactobacillus is great. It will lower your pH about 0.1. Uh, per when dosed at a one gallon per thousand gallons of system volume. So if I dose one gallon of labs per thousand gallons of system volume, it will lower my system by about 0.1, um, which is a normal dosage um, that you would use for maintenance in your aquaponic system. Um, so you know, those are kind of your, your three tiers of pH down. Um, a dry ice is also another great way to lower your pH if you're just using a system that isn't cycled yet. Uh, and you're just, you know, you filled the system up and there's no plants or fish in there, um, that can be another very cheap way to lower your, crash out the pH. Uh, as the dry ice melts, the carbonic acid will lower your alkalinity and your pH uh, in the water. So this gives you another, another tool. And then for pH down uh, do's and don'ts, you want to use, uh, like we talked about, muriatic acid for really big changes, phosphoric acid for kind of the mid-range, and then lactobacillus for your little adjustments, uh, and you won't go uh, won't having issues. Um, I would only look at citric acid. Uh, there are some like um, citric chelated products like um, citric chelated iron and stuff that's okay, but don't use citric acid or vinegar at, um, for aquaponics. It could cause a whole bunch of other microbial issues. And, and problems, especially vinegar, tends to breed all kinds of weird stuff when used in extremely large volumes. So um, definitely something that you want to avoid. Um, 
I know you, you, it actually is in some older aquarium books as well, if you get into some of the old 70s and 80s um, books. But in general, again, we're trying to keep it around 6.6, 6.8. If you're lowering pH and you start off at a, at a higher number and you get it within, you know, 7274, it's fine. Your nitrification process over time will lower it. You know, you don't have to get it all the way down to 6.6. Um, as long as you're something close to seven, you know, the system will balance out pretty quickly. And if you're cycling a new system, um, you know, you don't want to lower it all the way down. You want to let it cycle at that higher pH because it'll cycle much faster. As far as testing pH, um, digital meters are kind of the ones that I prefer um, just because I can check them on my phone and make sure that people are, you know, adjusting the pH when they're supposed to. And, you know, if something gets out of whack quickly, I know about it before. Uh, you know, anything else, but usually once you, once you know your system really well, you can walk in and look at the plants and tell if your pH is, is crashed or, or gone up because the plants will, will, they'll hold their leaves differently and they'll, you know, they won't be praying to the sun anymore and stuff like that if the pH is off. Another thing that's important with digital meters is to make sure that you uh, calibrate them at least once a month. I like to just set it, you know, the first week every month, we're going to calibrate everything whenever we have time. Um, it just makes it simple. It gets done every time and it just prevents problems. Um, and then replace your probes every two to three years. You know, um, I know some people say every year, I, I've never had to replace them every year. You, know, you can get a couple of years out of them, but make sure that you're um, calibrating them once a month and then replacing them at least semi-regularly. Uh, and then keep a, a aquarium pharmaceuticals um, AP, uh, pH test kit. They're super cheap. They're like seven, eight bucks and uh, they're extremely accurate. If you're getting a weird reading on your pH meter, um, it just gives you something that you can check it against. Um, but if you have color blindness, you know, a digital meters all, you know, obviously going to be better for you. Uh, and then avoid the test strips, the dip strips. They're never right. They're so inaccurate and affected by temperature and humidity and, you know, what star is in retrograde and whatever else. So just don't, uh, don't bother with the test strips. If you enjoyed this segment, learning all about aquaponic pH management, be sure to check out the Aquaponic Masterclass and Aquaponic Cannabis Masterclass uh, available in the links below. Be sure to check out the Growing with Fishes podcast. Over a thousand hours of educational content. We have content on all things plants and soil science, uh, as well as aquaponics, hydroponics, and much more. You can find the show on your favorite podcast app. YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, Google, SoundCloud, Amazon Music, and a whole bunch of other places. Thank you for watching. Be sure to check out any of the amazing resources that we have available to help people with their garden. You can check me out on YouTube over at Potent Ponics. You can check us out over on your favorite podcast app with Growing with Fishes or Potent Ponics, uh, depending on which app that you're using. Um, most of them are registered for both, but you know sometimes the indexing works a little screwy on others. Um, you can email me at potentponics at gmail.com. Be sure to check out our classes as well, aquaponicmasterclass.com, apmjclass.com, thepestclass.com. You can check out my website over at potentponics.com uh, or our Facebook group, Aquaponic Cannabis Growers. Thanks for watching.